Hello guys, Crispy here and welcome back to another monitor review. In this one, my friends, we're going to be taking a look at the KTC Play G27P6. This is a beautiful 26 and a half inch monitor with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and a PPI of 111, which I find to be the sweet spot for gaming in terms of size and resolution. It's also a really fast display with a 240 hertz refresh rate and probably its main selling point is that it's an OLED panel. That means that you get very vibrant colors, inky blacks and a super fast response time. We'll get there. You can get all this for 700 US dollars, which is a very steep price, I know, but compared to the competition, it's actually lower than average for an OLED panel with these specs. Now, you might be asking, who is KTC Play, right? I've never heard of this name before. Well, they're actually not new to the game, they're new to making their own gaming monitors, but they've been supplying displays for brands like Samsung and ViewSonic for years, so they're not really new new, you know? Back to the monitor now, and probably its main disadvantage compared to like an IPS monitor is that it has a WRGB panel, like most OLEDs in the market. That means that the text clarity isn't as good as in RGB panels, but with this size and resolution or the PPI basically, I don't really feel like it's a major deal. <laughs> it still looks good to me. But you know what doesn't look good and actually looks amazing? The display itself. Let's go over it, shall we? To start off, let's test the color accuracy of the display. For that, I used this display calibration tool and ran the tests in Display Cal 3 and we got some really good results. 99.9% .9 of sRGB, 90.8% of Adobe of RGB and 95.2% of DCI-P3. So this is exactly what they advertise and it's great for a gaming monitor. Out of the box the colors were only slightly off, giving a little bit of a blue tint to the image, so a cooler tone, but after some adjustment everything was great. I couldn't really get it to the perfect level, maybe because it's an OLED, but Still, it was good enough. On to the brightness now, and I used the same tool to record 447 nits of brightness, which is pretty much in line with their 450 nit specification. That's not amazing for HDR content on an IPS display, but on an OLED, it's a completely different story. That's because with fewer pixels lighting up, you actually get a way higher max brightness. So when watching HDR content or playing HDR, games, you can actually achieve a max brightness of a thousand nits. But what about minimum brightness, my friends? Look at that. I can't even see it properly right now. It's great, actually. <laughs> I recorded a minimum brightness of 36 nits. That's really, really dim, guys. You can see for yourselves, right? Even on a dark room, I struggle <laughs> to see things properly with minimum brightness in this display. And that's extremely good because you have a very wide range for brightness levels and you can adjust it to your heart's content. Contrast is next, my friends. And of course, with an OLED monitor, you get like infinite to one contrast ratio or 1.5 million to one, as they say in the specification for this monitor. That's because unlike other monitor technologies, OLED actually turns off the pixels to display a perfect black color. So you get these beautiful inky blacks that look absolutely gorgeous and it makes such a big difference in games like Cyberpunk 2077, for example. It's just, it's a joy to look at OLED, my friends, while gaming in dark titles. Now it's response times time. <laughs> And to test this, I used this LDAT sensor sent by NVIDIA. Now, response times are very important in gaming monitors, of course. You don't want any motion blur or ghosting introduced by bad or slow pixel response times, right? And especially at the fast refresh rate of 240 Hz, you will need quite fast response times as well, specifically 4.17 milliseconds. And well, I got extremely good news, my friends. If you don't know, 
OLED is known for its super quick, basically instant response times, and we got some really, really good results, the best that I've seen so far. So we got a result of 0.2 milliseconds of gray-to-gray -gray response time. It could go even lower, but my room is actually really cold, the monitor was at 20 degrees Celsius, and those were the results. I mean, it's instant, basically. OLED is known to be super, super quick with its response times, and this is awesome and amazing for competitive esports players. Now, backlight bleed is next, and there is none, because when you are seeing a black image like this one, the monitor is turned on, by the way, <laughs> the pixels are turned off. So that's another thing that OLED fixes, thankfully. And I'm looking forward to getting like a laptop with an OLED display as well because of this. I'm noticing that this has been a really good review so far. I have nothing bad to say about this, maybe aside from uh, the resolution not being enough for creative work. You know, I'd like to see 4K. Let's move on to build quality. The base is made of metal and it has quite a bit of weight to it, it feels premium. The arm also seems like it's made of metal, but I can't really tell for sure. And it's height adjustable of course, and it can tilt, swivel and pivot to both sides. Yes guys, it has it all, the only thing I wish it had that it doesn't is like an horizontal lock for example, so you know that the monitor is leveled. Now the monitor itself is made of plastic and it has quite a unique look. I personally like it, it's super slim at the sides and top, which gives it a premium look, and it looks quite different from the other monitors that we have in the market today. I like that. Speaking of ports, we have a couple of HDMI ports, a display port, a USB Type-C port that you can utilize to connect the monitor to your laptop, a USB Type-B port that you need to connect to your PC if you want to use the couple of USB A's that you have on the right of it, and then the the AC power plug. Still on the back of the monitor you can see the joystick, that's also the power button, and you can control everything on the on-screen display with this right here, of course, the adaptive sync, the brightness, and so on, just the normal monitor on-screen display stuff. It's not missing anything, it's feature-packed and it's quite intuitive to use with the little joystick, so that's great. Now let's talk about the speakers, these are dual 5 watt speakers that are stereo of course, and they sound alright, they actually get really loud but, you know, the, the actual quality of the sound isn't amazing. If you're just watching some YouTube videos, you can clearly hear everything, if you're gaming as well, but I would probably utilize headphones anyways. And finally, we have arrived at the gaming experience, my favorite part of these videos, because I actually get to play some games. <laughs> <laughs> so the first game that I tried was Counter-Strike 2 and of course with such quick response times and a 240Hz refresh rate everything felt super buttery smooth and it was just a really awesome experience. I found myself hitting a little bit more headshots here and there, you know. Um, same thing happened when I tested the Kurui 240Hz IPS monitor. For competitive play I also think that 27 inches is the step forward, there are still a lot of people stuck to like 24 and a half inch monitors but I feel like 27 inches just immerses you a little bit more and you can spot things a little bit better because the monitor is bigger you know moving on to Dota 2 I really like to see how this game looks in all of the monitors that I test because it's a very vibrant game with a ton of different colors and it looks awesome very very vibrant on this monitor right here again very high refresh rates unfortunately the game is actually kept to 240 Hertz. I wish it could go higher. Come on, Valve, what are you doing? Like, there are 360 Hertz monitors available and even higher now, so please unlock the FPS or something in Dota 2. But yeah, obviously, if you're playing this game in a competitive level, every
everything is gonna work absolutely fine. Even though it's not a very dark game, you still got that contrast and it looks really, really nice. And speaking of darker games, next up we got Cyberpunk 2077 and the streets of Night City during nighttime just look amazing in this monitor. Just as good as my 42 inch gaming TV. Obviously here it's gonna be a little bit smoother because of higher refresh rate, uh, but the PPI is actually the same as my 4K TV. But yeah, this game is a great representation of how good OLED can actually look. And of course I am recording everything with the camera, so it's gonna degrade the quality just a little bit, but I bet it's still gonna look great and buttery smooth. It's actually probably the smoothest experience I've had with this visual quality ever. Moving on to the new free-to-play, most well-optimized Unreal Engine 5 game out there. It's the finals. And in this one, I was playing at 1440p, low settings with epic view distance and epic textures. So the game doesn't look as good as it could look, but that was so I could get 240 FPS plus all of the time. This allowed for a really competitive experience in this game. I'm not really the best player here, but I still managed to get like 14 kills in one of the games. Uh, the one that you're seeing here, however, didn't really go as well as the first one, but in the first one I was recording with 30 FPS and uh, yeah, it's much better to watch these clips with 60 frames per second, so unfortunately we don't have as good gameplay as in the previous one, but hey, you can see for yourselves everything is super buttery smooth and if you end up buying a monitor like this, you're really going to enjoy this. And lastly, Red Dead Redemption 2. I played at high settings instead of ultra settings to achieve really high FPS once again because I really like the smoothness of this display you know I want to get close to those 240 FPS but in this one of course it wasn't really possible because Red Dead 2 is super super intensive still it was a beautiful experience going inside of forests for example made everything way darker than it usually is in IPS displays as well so although this has a really fast refresh rate and response times that are of course very handy for for competitive people playing competitive games and esports, it still looks and feels fantastic in these single player titles. That's it for the gaming tests, obviously you will need quite a beefy CPU if you want to achieve 240 FPS or close to that in most titles. I'd say you'd be looking at something like an RTX 4070 Ti or better and an i5 13600K overclocked at the minimum as well. Alright guys, and that's been it for this video, there aren't really many downsides to this monitor right here, but it also comes at a very very high price, so it's a premium monitor at a premium price tag. Obviously if you are on a budget, you want to go with an IPS display, there are some very good IPS monitors at 240Hz, same size, same resolution, but for premium buyers that want OLED now, this is probably the best deal that you can get on an OLED monitor. Thanks very much for watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all, bye bye